ready to go. So let's head over there and actually see. This will be Ryan's first time here since 2021. He'll be joining me over the next three days. That'll be awesome to get on some of these rides with them, see what his new opinions are, because he hasn't ridden these rides in forever. So it'll be awesome to see if he likes Orion or Diamondback better, because I think right now he prefers Diamondback. But well, maybe Orion will have something to say about that. Unfortunately, we are looking at some possibilities of some thunderstorms over the next few days. So I'm going to try and get as much snow as I can tonight in the event that the rides don't open for very much over the next few days. So first things first, let's head over to Orion and keep that streak going. is never a good sign, especially for this ride. is still alive. Just got an amazing front row ride on Orion and that's the only way to start off a trip to King's Island for me is doing that thing in the front row. The speed hill is really hitting today. It gave some great air time. Now I'm gonna actually do Racer. Normally I would head over towards rides like Diamondback or Mystic Timbers but because we're looking at chances of bad weather it's very possible Racer might not have both sides going the rest of the time and they are running both sides right now. So to make sure I get at least one or two racing rides in I'm gonna go over there do that once on each side. <laughs>
or twice, once on each side, and the blue side was far superior to the red. Not only did I win the race on the blue side, I took the L on the red, but the airtime on the trip out on the blue side was surprisingly good. And now I'm gonna ride this with Timbers, which I said in previous vlogs that I am not a fan of this ride. I've lost hope of this thing last year. Since I last rode this, I rode Texas Stingray, which is a very similar GCI with a bunch of solid airtime and laterals. So I'm hoping this thing is like that, but my experience on this ride in the past has been nothing like it. It's been very disappointing. I can only recall two of my 19 rides where I've actually gotten here today. So I'm not sure it'll be any better today, but it's worth trying once, so let's try it. three full days of Kings Island is underway and I am starting off with Flight of Fear for today. As you can see over there, Orion doesn't look like it's going to be open right on time and the park opens up at 10 and it's about 9.50 right now. So, assuming Flight of Fear opens on time and Orion does not, I feel like a lot of people that are over at Orion will come over and swarm Flight of Fear if that does open. So, I'm going to be waiting it out and getting on this one first thing. <laughs> Just rode Fly to Fear and that thing was amazing. Even though the mid course was hitting, unlike Poltergeist, the Six Flags Fiesta Texas, which I rode at the start of June, I thought Fly to Fear was just as good, honestly. The intensity on this ride was probably greater than I've ever seen it. It was tracking pretty well as well. So I'm very impressed with this thing. Now, I'm gonna go over and try Banshee since I didn't do that yesterday. I wanted to try it, but that line was long. So let's head over there. And plus, Orion's not even open yet. So who knows how long it'll be.
Gucci twice. First ride came in the second back row and that thing was not good back there. Non-stop rattling from start to finish and it was not pleasant. Not that intense either. And then I rode the front row which was way better than the second back row. The drop wasn't quite as good but it was a lot smoother and it was more intense. I'm a little bit nervous for riding to try the back row on Banshee later on because it'll be here after a while. We're gonna try the bat now and see how that one runs. And this thing was a pleasant surprise for me last year. So let's see if it's good this year. the bat front row and that was very solid although i will say i didn't think it was quite as aggressive until the end not one of the better rides i've had on this in fact my rides last year i would say were better Like... 
ago since I was over in the area, but that line was a little bit long. And I actually haven't done Diamondback yet either, so I'm gonna head over there and get it right on that. And then I might do either Mystic or Beast. Probably Beast though, because I don't really need to write Mystic. And then I do actually want to get on a ride, because I haven't done that yesterday either. <laughs>
the Diamondback backseat with Ryan. That was your first time riding it since 2021, wasn't it? Yes. How was it? Uh, just as good as I remember. Yeah. Still your favorite BM Hyper, you said? Oh, yeah. For me, it's a close second, but I would still take Mako over it. I got to ride that earlier this year, and. Yeah, yeah so did I. I still like Diamondback better. Yeah. We're actually in line for whatever this is called Snoopy, Snoopy Soapbox, Soapbox Racers. Racers. Yeah. This will be one of two new credits we'll be getting along with Great Pumpkin Coaster, which they recently removed the height requirements, so we'll both be able to get on that. Once we get off of this, we're gonna, I think, maybe try Mystic, see if Ryan thinks this is as good as he remembers it, because you guys already know my thoughts on it, so we'll see if Ryan feels differently, but that's after this. Another streak, this one being Snoopy Soapbox Racers. I think the obvious comparison for both of us will be Good Gravy at Holiday World, which we rode less than a week ago is when we're recording this. Yeah. I think I might slightly take Good Gravy because it's a longer ride. Ryan thinks I, otherwise. I prefer uh, Snoopy because it's a little more forceful. That's fair. And you got a tiny pop of airtime coming back off the spike when yeah. you're in the front row. Yeah, they're really close. It could go either way. One thing that Snoopy did have over Good Gravy was the audio that went on throughout the ride, like all the Peanuts characters cheering you on, which I think is a really cool addition. Now we're going to ride a ride that I'm not excited about, but Ryan is excited. I'm very excited for this. Mystic Timbers. Or now it's called Mid Stick Timbers because that thing is very very mid in my honest opinion. Sure hope the line isn't too bad, but... Oh wait, is this the line we're looking at right here? I don't know, that's... How long do you think that is, Ryan? I don't know. Wait, it's, it's all the way through that? No, it's not the back stretch box. Oh, it's not horrible, anyway. Okay. Let's give this thing a try, see if it's better than yesterday. We're actually going to Orion. We found out from our inside sources, aka my brother, he said it's on the stairs, so that's not a bad line at all. So we're going over there and getting some rides in on that. Plus, Mystic's line was quite long. We'd rather ride a better ride anyway. So let's go over there. You guys already know my opinion on Orion, but Ryan, in case you guys don't know what his opinions are, go ahead and explain what your thought process is about this ride, like what you think of it. It's a giga. <laughs> yes, it is a giga. We don't want to hear any of that hyper stuff. It is 100% a giga. I like every single thing about this ride except for the first two elements. First two elements did absolutely nothing for me. That's why this is my least favorite PM Giga by quite a large margin. Ride in the park, but Diamondback's definitely better. Yeah, but I don't know. This may change it. I mean, if it's a stairs way, we're gonna take advantage of it. Just flaps in. Assuming Mother Nature doesn't cause havoc over there, which I sure hope it's not. Which, oh yeah, look at that. That's really not bad at all. That line. So we should be able to get on this one fairly quickly here. Like inclement weather entered the area, so Orion is now down. So we're gonna try and get on racer, race each other on this thing before that closer weather, which I think is gonna, cause it's over there and it's back that way as well. So we're pretty much in the middle of it. And Ryan, you're not really huge on racing coasters, though, aren't you? No, but this is my second. Favorite one. This is like the longest line I've ever seen for this thing. Like, I've yeah. never had to wait for this thing. So, we're gonna try racing each other and see who wins.
understands where I'm coming from with how much I like Racer Kings Island after that. Yeah. Like, uh, oh my gosh. That is a close in quality of Screaming Eagle. Yeah, That's very close. That's how good that is. I actually wrote it once. You wrote it twice because we tried to race, but I timed it wrong, so I wasn't able to race you the first time, but... I won. He was on the blue side. I was on the red. I had more than a fist of room because the out only pushed it down two clicks. The air time I was getting was the best I've ever seen on that thing, and oh my gosh, it was good. Ryan, you actually beat me. Both times. The first time you said it was by a landslide. By a landslide. The second time was, it was by very a car close. It was very, very close. Like, by a car it could have gone either way. Yeah. But yeah, racer. So that good. was amazing. Yeah, so good. eventful ride we just rode back row on banshee and what happened to us that is like the best it's ever ran for me at least i feel not the problem is better but okay then we came into the brakes and then we like were sitting there for a minute and we're like did a break and sure yesterday. enough it did we got stuck on the brake run for like i don't know 15 minutes so now one of the better rides to get stuck on it i would actually argue it's probably the worst probably ride the part to get stuck on because the vests were really tied on us on the brake yeah, run. left collarbone wasn't doing good yeah for me it was both of them so that was not ideal but hey it listed another ride that our list of rides we got stuck on. That was actually the first time you've gotten stuck on a ride not at our home park. Exactly. Six bucks That's the list. first time I've ever done that. And now Banshee is in my top 50. That's another one I could add to the list because I've also gotten stuck on Top Field Dragster, Thunderbird I got stuck on, Flight of the Hippogriff and Islands of Adventure I got stuck on. I know there's other rides that I've gotten stuck on like the types of coasters I think. Anyway, we're going to try Invertigo now, see how that runs. And I'm a little nervous about this one because every time I ride it for the first time on a trip it knocks my socks off because of how insane and it is. And I have not been on it in five years. Yeah, he hasn't ridden it since 29 even though it was last year in 2021, he didn't do it back then. So we're gonna see how it rides today.
Forest Road, Mystic Timbers back row, which was the same old story. So I'm sick and tired of this thing not being a good ride. Now I'm heading to a ride that is really good, and that is Orion. So let's head over there. I didn't even put. I didn't put theory above it.
on Diamondback, one in the front, one in the back, two in row eight. Riot, you were with me for one of the rides row in row eight, eight as well as the row front. one. I don't think there's another BM Hyper that can beat this for me. Not even Shambhala? I don't I think, think that's so. the only I one. I think that's the only that one that would do it. That's the only BM Hyper that could beat this, but anything else doesn't have a shot. I've been on every single BM in North America, and this is by the far. BM Hyper, to clarify, not every single yeah, BM. By far the best one. Yeah, Diamondback is running so good. The sense being in the front was awesome. Sustained air in row eight. So much air, and it was a yeah. strong floater. You were counting how much air time this thing had in the front. How much air time did you count? How many seconds? 28 seconds. So essentially, now we have more air time on that than Steel Vengeance. Now, obviously, we don't know if that's an accurate count, but yeah, rough estimate Exactly, is. rough estimate of 28 seconds. Of but yeah, time. like we were out of our seat like the entire time. Oh like, my not God. a bad moment on that ride. I'm glad you did ride last my, year, because last my, year was not good. My first b and Hyper. And, and still your best one. Still the best one. For me, Mako's still on top, but I can respect why you have this at number one. It's just running so good this year. I've done some Beast Night Rides in the past. This is your first time. First time ever doing a Beast Night Ride. You're not crazy about this ride, though, aren't you? I have it in my bottom half of my 312 credits. He thought it was rough, which I will admit, it was bouncing up and down quite a bit when I rode it a little bit ago. For me, it adds to the character that this ride had of being an absolute riot from start to finish. The first time I rode this, it was my least favorite coaster ever. You rode it first in 2019. I didn't ride it until 2020. 2019, it was so rough, I couldn't enjoy a single thing about it. 2021, it was better, but it still, like, had no force to it, besides yeah. the double helix. Now is where it really comes down to the wire. Yeah, because... it's gonna perform or not. We're waiting here ahead of time, because they're gonna be suspending operations here shortly shortly to account for the fireworks show tonight, which actually this line wasn't as bad as last night. It was through some of these switchbacks last night. janky but at the same time it was kind of hilarious with how janky it was especially right before the mid course that whole section was way too janky for no particular reason and then when he slammed to a stop i was just laughing at it ryan and i were in the front we were like stuck leaning over the side of the train i was on the left and ryan was leading into me so that was chaos orion is a walk-on so we're gonna get on this one just tried the back row on orion since there was no line for the back and there were people in the front and honestly that kind of sucked the op stapled me so i got no air time throughout the entire ride even on the first drop so there pretty much was nothing great about that ride i'm gonna try it in the front row now because for me front is pretty much the only row because it does pretty much everything better when you have room in the back the drop is good but other than that it's a front row ride all the way in every single way so let's go try the front row
this, but the weather shut it down. And actually, I got a front row ride on a ride earlier, and it was way better than my ride in the back because pretty much everything about the ride in the front was better. Even the drop, because I wasn't stable. I did get some air time the front going over it, so that was nice. <laughs>
the beast and that was every bit as good as it usually is very intense very smooth overall awesome ride now i'm about to get on the great pumpkin coaster for my first time the last few years i've been here they've had a max height requirement but they've removed that to my knowledge which i heard ryan actually got this credit earlier today so if he's able to do it then i should be able to as well so let's get on this thing and actually get park completion at the park for my first time ever and then enjoy your ride back up get down leaving the park early because the forecast said the weather wasn't going to clear up. But my final ride count was four on Orion, two on Great Pumpkin Coaster, Boo Blasters, and Invertigo, and then one on Adventure Express, Fat, Beast, and Flight of Fear. One more day left, so let's jump to it. And this time, I'm starting off with the Beast, which is definitely the best wind coaster in the park. I thought I could try and replicate my Zen ride on this back in 2021, but there's a lot of people behind me, so it's not happening this time. At least it's the first one online. So, let's see how Beast runs today. <laughs>
got two rides on Beast instead of just one since I drove my personal so much. And then I just got off of Back Lot Stun Coaster. This reminded me of Revenge of the Mummy in a way with how there's a coaster section that's fairly short after the initial launch followed by a thematic sequence with some fire effects and then a coaster section right after. Well, I do prefer Revenge of the Mummy by a long shot, Back Lot is still a really solid ride. That's what I'm going to do now. I did not get on Diamondback at all yesterday, so I'm going to go over there and ride that and see how that's running because I haven't ridden it since the first full day.
Timbers and or Diamondback, which I did get some good shots of Diamondback on the second lap. Speaking of Diamondback, I wrote that in the second to last row and they actually assigned that row, so I'm like, hey, I'll take it. While I did enjoy it, it was nowhere near as good as the very back in my opinion because in the very back row, you're able to stick your arm out behind you and get soaked by the splashdown. Second to back row, you can't really do that. So that's why I think the very back is way better than the second to back, at least in my opinion, even though the air time was just about as good. I think I'm gonna go try racer and get a couple racing rides in on that because I didn't do it yesterday. After that, I think I'm probably gonna go do Banshee because that was down like basically all day yesterday. So we're gonna go do that and then actually I'll head over towards Orion as well because I haven't done that yet either.
answer two times a little bit ago, once on each side, and it was the same old story. So I won on the blue side, lost on the red side. Then I did a Ryan front row, awesome ride, and then all the taller rides closed in the weather. So like Orion, Banshee, Diamondback, and Invertigo all closed in the weather. Then those rides reopened, got another front row ride on Orion, this time in the pouring rain. And yikes, that was one of the most painful rain rides I've ever had in my life. It felt like little needles hitting my face in the front row the whole time, and I couldn't even keep my eyes open the whole time. I'm gonna try it again because it was insane. <laughs>
gone into the queue line for Whitewater Canyon to get shots yet, and that's what I'm doing right now, but those clouds might have still look too good, so let's hope it doesn't thunderstorm and shot down back down, which it might have. Hopefully Miss Timbers doesn't close either. <laughs> Timbers can be really good, but only when the track is wet. On my first ride in the front, I had the least amount of room I've had in this entire trip, yet the air time was by far the strongest because of the slick track. And something funny about the back row ride I had, I didn't realize that my seatbelt was really loose until we were at the top of the lift hill. On one of the hills, my seatbelt came undone by accident, so that was crazy. It was like two-click ride, and I had to pretty much staple myself just in case something bad happened on that ride because I didn't have a seatbelt because it came undone by accident. So I definitely enjoyed the front row ride I got better than the ride in the back. But if Mystic Timbers always ran like that, I think it would be number six in the park for me because I definitely don't see it beating Orion, Beast, Diamondback, Race, or Vertigo. But I can see it being rides like Fish. But maybe next year it'll run like this the whole time. But you never know.
to all the coaches in the park on this trip, I figured I might as well do the same. So I'm going to start off by doing Woodstock's Air Rail, which was originally flying a serial chase. Unfortunately, this still looks to have uh, over the shoulder harnesses that cause head banging. So not too thrilled about that, but we'll have to wait and see if this ride is any less janky than I remember. Because last year it was really janky, and I don't know why I rode it last year. I wasn't going to do this, or really Woodstock Express for that matter on this trip either. Since Ryan did it, I figured I might as well do both of them so I don't look like an idiot. <laughs> Diamondback, 
Dixon Racer, four on 